A dozen years ago, the world's six billionth child was born. Now the UN thinks the seven billionth child will arrive next week. It is a sobering reminder just how quickly the planet's population is growing. 10,000 babies are born every hour. But is this a problem? On Wednesday, a UN report will say that the total could reach nearly 16 billion by the end of the century. So, naturally, the worry will be how to feed and provide for all those extra people. However, some argue that the problem is already solved, because as people move to cities and become richer, they tend to want fewer children. Just over half the world's population now lives in cities, and 80% of us live in countries where fertility is levelling off or even falling. The fastest growing populations are almost always the poorest, but they make a much smaller impact on the world's resources. The poorest half only accounts for 7% of the world's carbon emissions, for instance. So, would another 7 billion people, or even more, be something to worry about? Well, with me in the studio is Fred Pierce, the author of People Quake, and we're also joined from Washington by Eric Asadurian, a senior fellow at World Watch Institute. Let me start with you, Fred. Mm -hmm. Let me put the question very simply. Are there simply too many of us? There are too many people for the way we live now, but there are so many ways that we can live our lives better better for the planet. We are it's about lifestyle, not numbers, then. It's about, I believe it's about lifestyle now. The big changes are now about lifestyle, how we consume, how we produce what we consume, how we produce our energy, those kinds of things. Population is... The, the population bomb is being defused, put it that way, but the consumption bomb is not being defused. Women today have half as many children as their mothers had. It's an extraordinary change going on. Let me turn to Eric Asadurian in, uh, in uh, Washington. Um, Eric, I mean, do you agree with that view or do you think that actually we have to curtail the number of people, the rate of reproduction of the planet? Well, I absolutely agree that the number one problem is the way we consume and, more importantly, the culture that stimulates overconsumption and spreads that not just to industrial countries but all around these new populations of individuals. But to say that population is solving itself or not as relevant, obviously, if we had a smaller population, consumption could be better curbed and uh, we would have a bit more flexibility in dealing with that problem. So ideally we're, we're achieving both. We're shifting to sustainable technologies, uh, reducing total consumption and stabilizing the population as quickly as humanely possible. So if I could sum it up, some, uh, numbers and lifestyle. Um, Fred, I mean, Malthus, Thomas Malthus, the political economist in the, I guess it was the 1820s, said mm -hmm. that if the population of the planet keeps on growing, we're going to get into an awful lot of trouble. And I don't know what the number was then. Perhaps it was 2 billion or 3 well, billion. But we're now less. at 7 billion, and we're, we're in some trouble, but it's not critical, is it? It depends on the technology that we have. If we live our lives better, if we organise ourselves better, we can have 10 billion, maybe even 12 billion people on the planet and things will be fine. Before we had the Industrial Revolution, probably one billion was the maximum. So these, there isn't a sort of fixed limit to the number of people we can have. It's really in our hands how we organise ourselves. Eric, 12 billion people or more on the planet, does that keep you up at night? Uh, it, it would if that was in the cards. I hope that we will much more likely stabilise around 9 or 10 billion. But, but how but do you know Matt, that? You said that well, I, I hope that, that the middle uh, the projection of the United Nations will, will go forward. But really, what, what, what I want to pick up on is what you just said, that it's not so critical right now at 7 billion. Two-thirds of our ecosystem services are being degraded or being used unsustainably, according to uh, 1,300 scientists in the Millennium Ecosystem R Report. We're using more of the Earth's biocapacity every year than it's generating. The climate is... Uh, is way out of control. We haven't actually, you know, we haven't found a way that we're going to actually stabilize at two degrees increase of, of climate mm. change, let alone mm. even the four degree, which is more yeah. of a worry. So if we don't keep uh, dealing with this, both population and consumption, I'm afraid that even a population of seven billion is going to undermine okay. the Earth's systems and our livelihood. Well, let me put this question to Fred. Is it easier at the end of the day to control population than to change the way we live our lives? We are already controlling population. As I said, women are having half as many children as their mothers are doing. These are the poor That's women... That's adjustment to the way the world works. Absolutely. This is, this is poor women taking, making real choices about how they want to live their lives without compulsion, and they're making really good choices. So I don't think we should be blaming overbreeders in Africa. That's not the problem now. The problem is over-consumers really a bit closer to home. 
Eric, I mean, if we had um, a population control of some sort, at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be impossible to change the way we live our lives, even on the issue of climate change. It's been virtually uh, impossible to, to make a, dr a dramatic change in the last 20 years. Well, I'm not willing to say it's game over already, but what's interesting is that there's two pieces of the puzzle. First, if by providing access to family planning, education, and opportunity, we could actually go to replacement rate right now. Uh, a lot of, some more women in the world do have access to family planning, but many still don't. So that's one piece of the puzzle. But the overbreeders that I would point to, ironically, are, are those in, in industrial populations. Keep in mind that that uh, one child in the United States has the impact of nine children in a low-income country. So a, a person who has three or four children in the United States has the equivalent of, of 27, 36 children when we're talking resource term. So shifting the culture to normalize the one-child family in countries like the UK and the US is a, is a key step in this puzzle. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if I like the term acid, um, uh, like the term overbreeders, but Eric Asadurian in Washington, <laughs> Fred Pierce here in London. Thank you very much.